Let us pray. Father, we've gathered into your house, and Lord, we've been blessed as we have lifted our voices in song, as we share scripture together. We've come, Father, to worship Jesus. We come with humble hearts and a willingness to give ourselves to you. So as we do so, Father, bless us with your presence, we ask in Christ's precious name. Amen. The Christmas story is really a story about a baby. It doesn't come as any great shock to any of you. But babies are interesting because there's a great expectation of the arrival of the baby. They don't often come totally unexpected. But the closer that the baby gets, the more anxiety there is if it's the first one in the mother and the dad isn't quite sure what's going on, but there's an anxiousness there. So too it was with the prediction of the birth of Jesus. You know, of all the babies throughout the stream of time that have been born, there's been some unusually popular ones. You can probably read in the tabloids and do the Googling and this star had this baby and this one was grew up to be famous and this one not so famous. I took just a moment because I wanted to find out a little bit what do people really think about babies and who are the some of the most famous babies born? Because oftentimes we think everybody just accepts Jesus as the Savior of the world, and he's the most famous one. So just very quickly, number, in spot number five is the Gerber baby. Now, some of you have not heard of the Gerber baby. You can ask your parents, and if they don't know, ask your grandparents. The Gerber baby is the, the baby that appeared on all of the baby food jars. Smiling face, now some 80 years old. She was on well known in her time. Number four, coming in at number four, was the first test tube baby. July 25, 1978, marked the entrance of Louise Brown as the first test tube baby. Coming in number three was baby Jessica McClure. A little more obscure, but you remember very well hearing on TV and reading in the newspaper uh, and magazines about her. Jessica Jessica McClure as a baby was not famous because of her cute portrayals in any commercial, but October 14, 1987, she had fallen in her aunt's garden down an eight-inch pipe. The entire community gathered together for 58 hours. Rescuers joined hands in braving the tasks of pulling the little toddler from the eight-inch pipe alive. And most of the nation held its breath as that went on. Number two, a lesser-known baby is the laughing baby Although 110 million people have viewed her on YouTube, and he is seen in a two-minute video that was uploaded featuring William Nelson of Sweden sitting and being delightfully silly watching his father's nose for two minutes. I don't understand how he placed number two, but there you have it according to popularity. I was waiting to see who would be number one. Well, you'll have to wait a while. No, I won't do that. 
I was quite pleased when indeed number one is the baby Jesus. None of the babies that have come into the world could trump the enduring fame of baby Jesus. His name is written in the Bible and in scripture, or in scripture has invoked faith and has caused worship and adoration of billions around the world. So where is Jesus today? Where is he? We certainly don't find him in a number of different areas. He's not in a geographical location such as New York City or Austin, Texas, San Francisco, the White House. He's not in systems. Where is he? Where is he in the stream of time? We find, uh, we find the prediction of his birth clearly, uh, clearly outlined in Scripture from our Scripture reading this morning. We're going to recall, uh, we're going to recall the story from a, uh, certain aspects this morning that will just reinforce our faith and our gratefulness. Genesis says in the prediction, I will bless thee, and bless thee, I will bless them in thee and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed as a prediction of the coming of the Messiah. Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter, one, chapter 11, verse 1, And there shall come forth, out, uh, from, come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and the branch, referring to Jesus, shall grow out of his roots. And Micah 5, verse 2 says, But thou, O Bethlehem, Thou shalt be little among the thousands of Judea, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me that is to be ruler of Israel, whose goings forth have been told of old from everlasting to everlasting. Unusual babies, the place, unusual places, the prediction of the baby that was about to be born. It was in October that I got word from my nephew that I'm not sure what a nephew's son is called, but perhaps he would be my grandnephew, I think. In great anticipation, mom and dad waited for the birth. They had a range of dates. And so Keegan came into the world, much to be celebrated in the comfort of a hospital room and in the loving arms of his parents celebrating his first day of life. Not so with other babies who've come into the world. Not so, so much with the baby Jesus. The place where a baby is born sometimes is not of the parents choosing. Just by way of reflection, those of you who have had your babies in the hospital can rejoice that you did so. Because as I just looked at some unusual places, quite frequently they're born on the way to the hospital. They don't make it to the hospital in the back seat of the car, in the passenger seat, uh, of the front seat to a horrified husband. What do I do now until the EMS gets there to assist? One young mother was shopping at Walmart in 2006. Brittany Miller told her grandmother she needed to make a comfort stop. And they called EMS because the baby was born at Walmart. They paged the grandmother over the intercom. Can you please come? You're going, you're going to be a grandmother again. She dutifully named her baby Marty. I'm not sure exactly how that works. Another, another, um, another, baby, another baby that was born in an unusual place, uh, did, the woman did not get a choice to decide where that she would have her baby. It was May and a Nigerian woman had given birth on board of an Italian Navy vessel, Betica which had just rescued her and 654 other souls from the middle, middle of the Mediterranean. She named her baby 
Francisca Marina, after the Marina military who rescued her and both mother and baby were doing well. Not to be left undone, other mothers have given birth in elevators and name their babies after the elevator. Some have given birth in a car, name their babies after a car. One has been known to give birth in a subway and named her baby after the station where the subway was at the time of birth. I'm so thankful I was born in a hospital. I don't know about you. But when we think about Jesus, we know of the prediction of his birth centuries before his birth. It was predicted that he would be born. The place of his birth was predicted as well. And you can read the story as you have many times that he would be born in Bethlehem. And as they made their way to Bethlehem, Joseph and Mary, open your Bibles and follow along in Luke chapter 2. And as Joseph went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, verse 4, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed, Mary his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished, that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in the manger because there was no room for him in the inn. So where was Jesus at that time? They had longed for Jesus. They anticipated his birth and they missed his arrival by and large. How is it? How is it that God could send forth his only begotten son? How is it that he wasn't given a palace? Why is it that he would come to Bethlehem and be born? Just as the prophecy was given in the Old Testament times, conferring that Jesus indeed is the son of God. But where was he born? I find it interesting. Where was Jesus on that night? If he had knocked, if you had been the innkeeper, imagine with me for just a moment the knock on the door. And here's this obscure couple standing before you. Clearly, clearly she's pregnant. Do you have room? There was no, there was no emailing ahead or phoning ahead for a reservation in these days. You have to go back to your grandparents and your great-grandparents and many generations back and understand how travel happened. Travel happened if you went into a city, you would just arrive in the city and knock on the door. And quite often, it was customary that people would keep a small part of whatever, whatever their house was, a corner that they would entertain guests. It was part of the expectation of the culture that day. That night, that corner was taken already. There was no room at the inn. Where is Jesus? Where is Jesus, the king of the universe? Should be born in the palace, the highest place possible. Coming. Coming. And he's born in a manger, surrounded by his parents, a humble place of birth. Without much fanfare, without much notoriety, but I believe he comes that way. Because when you've looked into the face of the when you looked into the face of a baby, they're so innocent for at least the first fifteen minutes. They just look up and say, I've come from utter peacefulness into this world. Mom and dad are looking down and saying, how could we be so blessed? How could we be so blessed? 
They've heard the cry of the baby and they know everything is good. The baby is here and everything's fine for the first few days. And then the little child becomes, I know what I want and I know when I want it. And they're still so innocent. He comes so humbly. He comes so approachably. He comes with such gentleness into our lives. Imagine if he had been born in a palace. Imagine if he had been born with a lot of fanfare. We might feel distanced from him, but he comes humbly to live, to grow, to walk among mankind as an example. He comes with a purpose. For the scripture says, He came to save them from, you heard this, I think it was last week. He comes to save them from their what? Sins. He comes to be Emmanuel, God with us. Comes humbly to Bethlehem that we might behold him. So we've seen the prediction. We've seen the place. We've seen the purpose. Now we have to ask, where is Jesus? We know he's not in Florida. We know he's not in the governor's mansion. We know he's not residing at Warren Buffett's house. We know he's not obviously in the political system or shades of government, where is he? Well, let's follow along, because after purpose comes the people. Verse 9, verse 9 of our scripture reading today, And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold. Uh, let me back up. I skip verse 8. And the shepherds were there in the same country. Shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were sore afraid. How many of you had angels appear before you? Wouldn't it be neat tonight? Just, just outside your house. It starts to get lighter and lighter. And you think, oh, who stole the car? You don't hear any helicopter. And you wonder, where's that light coming from? You open the door and you look up and you just see the sky lighting up. And you hear a voice. And you see, it must be the glory of the Lord. And they were so afraid. I'm wondering, friends, what would your response be? Angels came. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings and great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in the manger. And suddenly there was, a ho there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and good will to men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them onto heaven, the shepherds said unto one another, <laughs> The whole sky lighted up with the glory of thousands of angels. And they didn't, they didn't have to guess what they should do. <laughs> they looked at each other and said, Let us now go even to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known on to us. There was no doubt in their mind. Was there? You read this story Year after year, some of you are nearly as old as I am. And if I read it once a year, that makes that I've read it so many times. 
But there was no doubt, where is Jesus? People look for him today. Where is Jesus? I'd like to see him today. Where is he? I'd like to talk to him today. How can I find him? Go to Bethlehem. Go to Bethlehem, see him laying in the manger. Go to Bethlehem and behold him, the Son of God, given from God to this world that he might grow, that he might live, that he might minister, and he might give himself as a sacrifice for my sin and your sin as well, friends. Where is Jesus? The prediction, the purpose, the people. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph, verse 16 says, and the babe lying in the manger, and Joseph and the babe. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wandered after those things which were told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And here was the response. You're with me so far. You're in the manger, looking at Jesus in the face, the Son of God, fulfilling the prophecy with a full, full realization. You're the shepherd who's responded to the voice of God. I'll show you where Jesus is. Don't be afraid. Now you've seen God, go and tell others what you have seen. Where is Jesus, the world asks. Can anyone tell me, where is Jesus? You've met them at work. How do I know there is a God? They wonder, where can I find Jesus? And God is looking for good shepherds like you, like me, that will take them to Bethlehem. That while we are afraid, we have experienced being in the presence of God and the glory of God. And notice what the shepherds did. That we too might have our hearts filled with the glory of God and the presence of God. And verse 20 says, And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told on to them. An amazing story, isn't it? An amazing story. You've heard it scores of times. But it's only a story until it grips your heart and your soul, and you look in the face of Jesus, and you go back to Bethlehem and say, God, I am so afraid of you at times. You work miraculously in my life, but I'm so afraid to open my mouth to share the story to those who are looking for Jesus, because I don't know what to say. I don't know how to approach them, but they're looking, and they're wondering, where is Jesus? Take them to Bethlehem. Take them to the journey of experience what you've experienced. Take them to the place from worry, doubt, and fearful living to the place of Bethlehem where there's hope, joy, and glorifying God because that is the Christmas presence with the sea that is the Christmas present with a T that God has given to each one of us. May we, today, with joyous hearts, realize that Jesus lives within us, in our hearts. And when people are looking for Jesus, we can lead them to Bethlehem, as we share Christ with others. Take Jesus to someone today and tomorrow and glorify your Father as you do so.